Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we're having a quick look at how I do low contact or no contact washing. I'm no detailing expert, so don't expect this to be that, um, but I have a nice car, and my nice car, I like to avoid getting any further scratches on it. So my technique for just a quick wash is first, use a lint roller to take any fluff and dirt off the soft top and then do a low pressure rinse. So although you'll see I'm using a jet wash here, I've got the nozzle off the end, and it's just basically just sprinkling a hose pipe onto the car. The car's not filthy dirty, but it's been driven around, it's got dust and uh, debris on it. So it's representative of um, a nice summer's day's drives debris. Next step, step three, Give the car a watery foam or snow foam wash using your jet wash. If you uh, haven't got one, I really recommend getting one of these here uh, snow foam attachments for your pressure washer. A little bottle you stick on the end. Put some good foam in there and away you go. Before, allow the foam to actually dwell and sit on your car. Because whilst it's doing that, it's lifting some more of the muck and debris off the surface and gently carrying it away. Snow foam helps keep the car wet for a bit longer and so really helps with moving the dirt along. And what I'm doing is basically, whilst the foam's still running nicely, I'm going to leave it on the car. As soon as it starts to sit, then we're done. Next step, number five. I do a high pressure rinse, so I put the nozzle back onto my jet wash and basically trying to get all the snow foam off. Um, I'm not putting the nozzle directly onto the bodywork, it's always at a tangent and particularly sideways on the roof. Um, I probably get within about two feet of the car most of the times and you're just removing the film. The snow foam that I'm using is uh, Demon, and uh, I'll put a link in the description below to that if anybody's interested, along with the snow foam gadget that I've been using and having some quite good success with. So now we've got a car that has no debris on it. Now I'm giving it the next going over with the snow foam, this time turned all the way up to thick. A little adjuster on the uh, canister on the end which basically you can vary how much um, snow foam to water ratio you get and that will stay on the car for ever such a long time it's really useful next using a two bucket technique which means a clean bucket of rinsing water and a bucket with a little bit more of your um, shampoo same stuff for me again in there um, and I'm using a noodle microfiber knit, mitt even, not a knit. Um, I give the car a rubbing over, um, and the snow foam helps you see where you've been. I go in straight lines rather than little circles, um, just again, so that if I do make any very, very minor marring, then it's at least in a straight line, and it doesn't show up so badly. My car is far from being a perfect car or a show car, but it's relatively new to me. The bodywork is in very good condition. Uh, it has been lightly restored, and I want to look after it best as I can. Always been protective of the previous car, PJ. Its bodywork looked great, but as you've seen in previous videos, uh, maybe not quite as good when we got underneath. And this one's going to be no exception. I'm sure there'll be many a detailer watching this video, rolling their eyes and criticising. And if you want to give some advice, that's great. But as I say, I'm, I'm not a detailer. That's not intended to be what I'm sharing with you. This is just what I do with my car.
obviously the footage is speeded up and edited but the genuine article took me 35 minutes Next step, number eight, I put an almost pure water snow foaming on it. So I've got the foaming turned all the way off. And this is quite good. I like this. It leaves a pattern all over the car. As long as it's universally clean and nothing's on it, you get this sort of leopard effect. I should say Jaguar effect, really. And as long as you're quick as you walk around the car, any gaps in this pattern will indicate a greasy spot or somewhere you've not rubbed something that's contaminated and that and one of a bit on either side were the only bits that weren't properly cleaned and that's probably hand grease and marks from leaning on the car then a quick high pressure rinse again I've got the nozzle back on and I'm not keeping the jet playing on any one area of the car just dancing it around moving all the snow foam off to reveal my nice clean car. I'm not using a water filter on the supply or anything like that. We have pretty good quality water in Lincolnshire where I live um, so we don't have too much trouble but it would leave water spots if you left water on the car. Where I'm using this sort of drag drying technique. Take a large good quality microfiber towel, place it on the bodywork and basically just drag it along and it's amazing good cloth really clean car you'll take almost all of the water off in a single sweep um, and for a quick clean I wouldn't do anything beyond this point if I was taking the car to a show I might use a little bit of demon shine which is basically a drying agent with a little bit of wax in like a detailing spray you might call it um, again, great product, and it does help dry the car, um, and it adds a little bit of wax. But the car is pretty well waxed; it's in it's in good nick, as I say at the moment. So um, this is all I need to do, and my well washed car in aquamarine mica. This is what it looks like close up. It's kind of a soft metallic. Um, with a quite a heavy pearl finish that changes between a green and a blue depending on the angle of light, the weather, etc. etc. You can see that that is a pretty good clean from a dusty and road grime covered car to this in 35 minutes. No polishing, no waxing involved. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more on modding, maintaining, tweaking the secrets of XK8s or you're into T25s and Jeeps and playing around in your garage, then join us again soon on To The Garage.